picks to kind of start that game plan for Correct. you. But now we're going to load up here into the draft. Game number two, match point for Team Hawk here. Yep. Incendio Supremacy going to want to start strong in the draft. They're going to be on that blue side. So they will have that first pick. Great first ban, like yep. we said. Just take it out so Gary can get it, and you don't have to be responding to him the whole time. Well, That's right. I wouldn't be surprised if the carry is going to be banned out by Incendio Supremacy as they don't pick it up, or maybe they just prioritize the glue, right? But then again, Eve will not be uh, going through. Team Hawk can't consider banning out the glue this time. As compared to the previous game, it was very difficult to deal with. Though, they have shown that they can actually defeat the glue with the Grok. Yeah, uh, for great. Team Hawk, right, they honestly, right now, if they broke, don't fix it, right? Just leave the carry open. You have a lot of other picks. You have yep. an assassin player as good as Gary that can dive towards that carry if Incendio actually pick it up. We've seen that Sunshine here on the carry so far in this tournament. I don't think he's played a lot of carry games, actually, yeah. because it's just been banned out. So exactly. that can also be a big question, right? Is he comfortable on the yep. carry? The glue is still going to be banned out by Team Hawk. You can already see some uh, respect given over yep. after the Fanny ban, right? You need to understand that, hey, give respect. Yeah, just give respect. Even when you, you get away from it, uh, you mean, uh, I mean, uh, you win against it once, don't stretch your luck. Don't right? stretch your yeah. luck. Just uh, try to bat it out. And that is Team Max going to be uh, banning it out. I wonder if the Joy is going to be the choice for Incendio Supremacy. So far, there is a hero that we rarely see because it's almost always I, banned. I mean, I, still the question is, is does Joy really deserve that ban? I feel like yeah. some people are still debating it because yeah. usually you see Joy in the jungle. I, I feel like that's where the more success is. Again, this is reminiscent of back then when uh, Julian was always banned yeah. back in MSC, right? So Joy's kind of in that position. Okay. And But this is the Ling ban coming out yeah. too, so it's two assassins. Still though, we could possibly see Gary still even pick up that Hayabusa, Hayabusa right? Yeah. Which has popped up a lot throughout Man. this M4 tournament. And uh, still a great choice. Instead, you don't want to play the Waka Gary game <laughs> oh, again, man. just like in previous games. So they just ban it out. Now it opens up both Ka um, Kaja and Valentina, but at the same time, Joy can. It does it deserve the ban? I think against Incendio Supremacy, knowing that they have not picked that up yet, you can kind of gamble it. However, it's always like all teams need to know how to play Joy. Yeah. I don't see that for Incendio Supremacy knowing how they play. There, there it is. Open. They will give out a joy. Because it's almost like one of those things. Where, I mean, even the group stages, the discussion was, man, are some teams just picking these heroes because, they're you know, strong. because they're strong? And then you see them and they don't, you know, it doesn't really work out for them. The but carry. Incendio Supremacy going to go ahead and pick up the carry. So this is the first start for them. We saw in the first series of the day. Once you pick up a carry and the Kaja is open, the Kaja yeah, yeah. gets picked up instantly, and instantly. the Kaja does so well against exactly. the carry. Because the range, the yeah. range that carry has is pretty short, right? You can exactly. really punish the carry. And yeah. right now, Team Hawk, I think they're going to... Joy carry. Joy, uh, Joy Kaja. Kaja, yeah. That picks up a counter for Joy too, right? Yeah. You pick it up away from Incendio. Exactly. I, I think it's not rocket science to pick those up. And I'm pretty sure the Team Hawk has... Your rocket science. Yeah, your... <laughs> Science. Your joy. Jo hey, uh, thank you. Hey. <laughs> you, you threw him off. Uh, yeah, threw, yeah, threw. <laughs> yeah. Well, what? Okay. point. There it is, though. It's not, oh, it's Kaja. not Kaja. It's Grok. So it isn't rocket science. Yeah, it it's is. More. It is. Okay, so what I like about the Grok is that you deny it away from the carry. The combo of the carry and the Grok has been proven to be the bane of Team Hack when they went up against Echo. So you don't want to give that up. Yeah. Also, it's a big open big. You don't reveal yet whether or not we are Roamer or will be the next villain. And a bit of the Benedetta and the Estes. All right, okay. Okay. So, the Turkish delight still. Well, I mean, they're still going with it, right? And uh, this, again, if you're going to have the Estes, you always have to be mindful of that, right? I mean, yeah. we've talked about this so many times when Estes pops up, the sustainability and everything. But this time, with the Benedetta, I like it because... I mean, we've seen some great setups with yeah. the Final Blow, Petrify right. combinations, but then sometimes, you know, when those amazing moments happen, you don't have that damage to follow up. Yeah. Now, having the carry there and kind of locking people down and then having that safety net of the heal as well could be beneficial, but yeah. still, I think the biggest question mark is the Kaja uh, possibly locked in here, right? Because, okay, that's not, that's the quad. So the quad's coming up. This is a very different trend of the draft that we're not used to seeing, I feel like. Uh, the Claude is uh, one of the 
theory crafted answer to the ultimate bonus strategy because yeah. they, they go together. You have our theory as well as the blazing do it. Then again, the presence of the Benedetta kind of makes it difficult because you have ways to kind of bring back the damage and also you have the access to the back lines. Not just the Benedetta, but also the carry, right? Claude really struggles up against the carry in this lane matchup. So picking up that Claude is a bit risky. Yeah. But I get what they're what they're trying to do, right? They're up against the Ube. They're up against this kind of strategy where they want to group up. That's some AOE damage. And on top of that, you also have that battle mirror image that just is such a good escape tool. Yeah. And Incendio Supremacy, from the games we saw, or from last game, literally, they are they really struggle yeah. to pinpoint on a target when you're up against so much mobility. And that's exactly what Hawk are doubling down on. Joy, Grok, mobility, Claude. mobility. Small, small mobility. Yeah. Not only that, but too, I mean, the fact that technically you don't know where the Grok is going just yet. You don't know where the Joy is going. Jungle because Grok. Well, <laughs> that's Why not? stretching it a little bit, but it could work. I mean, but still, Rome Grok, side yeah. lane Grok. Joy could go in the jungle, could go in the side lane. We've seen that happen, too. Very flexible. Heck, we've seen her in the mid lane, too, right? So still, that's something there to consider. Obviously, Claude going to the gold lane. So uh, still... The targeted bands here are towards the jungle for Incendio Supremacy. They take out that Martis. They don't want to deal with that utility. Um, I mean, just the tankiness. They might even take one more jungler out if uh, for Team Hawk here. Because the response from Incendio Supremacy, they know that stat from Man with yeah. his Kadita. They take oh, it out, shaman. and there you go. That's actually a great choice here, the Valentina. Yeah. Because you don't have to worry about them taking your ultimates as yeah, well. Yeah, wild charge. What's is Rosa going to play now, right? What is Rosa going to play? Yeah, um, she'll still have the Savior, perhaps. Oh, man. Up against that dive? Yeah, but the dive is just way too good. Maybe a Lilia, perhaps, if uh, if they are allowed to. But, you know, Team Hack can just snatch that away. If they, uh, they That actually actually fits their composition, too. So, they are uh, oh. in a very bad spot. Eudora going to be banned out. One of the heroes that Team Hack yeah. actually played, too. Interesting. It's one of the pocket strategies yeah, or pocket yeah. picks for man in the mid lane. And now it's time for Team Hawk to go for pick. And I honestly think at this point, they need a mid lane, right? Do they want to go for something like the Lunox and take it away? No, they, they go for something like a Faramis. Yeah. So, you mentioned Lilia. Yeah. I personally like the Lunox here for Incendio Supremacy. Up against so much mobility, yeah. you need someone to be able to burst them down before they even notice, right? Yeah. And Lunox has that kind of capability. Lilia, on the other hand, very hard to hit those skill shots with a lot of mobility being yeah. placed, a lot of blinks as well, like the Claude. Let's see what they go for here. That's the Lunox pick coming through. Well, what do they pair it up with? You're looking for a jungler. Frederick still is good. How yeah, they a, need that. They, they need that. They need a frontliner. Well, Barret is also available, so that's also one consideration. Barret's have, Fredrin. That's right. I have Leomorg. a crazy idea. What Leomorg? if they pick up a Leomord? Actually, a Balmond. A Balmond? Yeah, but wow. that's very we unlikely. Leomord is a choice. No, we haven't seen Balmond. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Barrett's. Barrett's. See, it's a solid front line, right? They go yeah. for the efficient pick again. Not yeah. much risk with this pick. Very good clear. Yeah, still well, overall good pick. Again, it's still something, you know, utility jungle. You can focus on the objectives. That's what you need to do. Uh, almost probably like the second best choice yep. uh, if Martis is banned out, right? So um, I guess if you look at Incendio Supremacy specifically, they've got their bases covered. I really do want to see how the Benedetta is utilized as well, if they can kind of just put pressure around the map this time. Maybe it's Incendio Supremacy that's being like, hey, Team Hawk, respond to us this time, right? Um, but even, if, even just looking at this, I really am interested. Okay, it's a diggy. It's Diggy no, it's mid. Okay. Wait, Diggy Rome, Faramis mid, and that's the Grok in the jungle. Yep. No, oh, it's no. Gary. It's Gary. Oh, okay. Okay. it's Gary, man. I know oh, you were man. excited to see it. On. Come on, come on, but Gary. Do you want? Do you want to see Gary in a single dash hero, <laughs> an ultimate for a dash? You don't want to see that. You want to see Waka Gary? Yeah, that's a Gary. Joy. That's a Gary. That's a Gary. Joy. Joy is a Gary pick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll have to see. Again, I, I, I'm. This is a very still weird, un unorthodox draft, right? But both. it's Team Hawk. What can we ex This is kind of something you. What, what's the saying with Malaysian teams? There's a certain saying. Yeah. Right? Um, you're never sure. You're never sure, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking. No, no, I was thinking of the, the Tagalog version, but yeah. yeah. You're never sure, right? With uh, these Malaysian teams here. But again, crucial match here. Their match point for Team Hawk. Incendio Supremacy, even looking at the lineup 
they've got great tools again like they did in the previous game, but can they make it work here? Ladies and gentlemen, we're loading up into the land of Don. Match point for Team Hawk. Incendio Supremacy looking to extend the series. Who comes out on top? It's going to be very difficult to, to find out. I, uh, looking at Incendio Supremacy, it looks like a very difficult lineup to pull up. Yeah. I mean, I'm just talking about like ease of execution here. It's like so many conditions for Incendio Supremacy. If their composition oh. is good, it's really looking good. But when it comes to like, the raw damage or you know, execution for Incendio Supremacy, it's definitely more difficult compared to Team Hawk. I agree, right? Incendio Supremacy, looking at their composition, there's a lot that needs to go right, and especially that gold lane, because they're going to really bank on the fact that Sunshine and Rosa can melt down the frontliners from Team Hawk and yep. the Bursters. The Divers, technically, Gary Panda, the way Incendio are playing right now is they're peeling yep. with damage. Yep. I thought, you, I thought you were going to mention the Ghost Bursters, you <laughs> know, but I, I feel like Fermis, in a way, isn't as strong oh, as we're, Okay, missed it. Not going to be able to get that, but still, I mean, very reminiscent of the previous game, right? A lot of early action here. The best thing, though, is if no one is able to get that first blood before that first turtle comes out, Wolf, who's got yeah. the advantage for that first objective? I think um, it's Angel Supremacy, just because of the fact that they have the Barrett's. It's very strong in the first uh, few minutes of the game. And when it comes to, like, turtle fights, you can hold your ground, utilizing your Daytona as well. You can still pick up the Retribution when the fighting gets dicey, so you are actually immune to ca to stuns or uh, crowd control during that period. So I guess to answer your question, Incendio Supremacy should take advantage of, the, uh, of that uh, fact. Well, let's see, right? Because early on, you can already see the matchup here. Sunshine is doing it a little bit better than Panda in the gold lane as expected. Because of this, Incendio do have a bit more pressure to play on towards a turtle with Alien rotating to the mid lane and actually lane swapping right. with Rosa. Rosa wants to get that level four quickly. The yep. turtles reset it and they're both just gonna disengage. Yeah, everybody's gotta be pretty much careful here at this point, but across the board, all green lights for everybody. So it really comes down to how they utilize this, especially even with the time's journey on Min here. But the poking coming out. Alien with a petrify in the final blow. That's a time journey, but wow. Min's gonna be taken out. First blood over to Incendio Supremacy. Oh, great decision there coming out from Alien. Also yep. able to secure that first kill for himself. Should also be that turtle. No! Gary coming in, picking up the retry. That's a missed time by Lola as Gary now is going to be forced oh. to back off. Tianzi picks up the kill. Man, forced to flicker out, and Tianzi will just trade that away oh. with a purple buff steal yeah. on Team Hawk's jungle. Fortunately for Incendio Supremacy, they found the post uh, turtle fight and won it because the setup was already there for Incendio Supremacy. They have Four ultimates available in that fight. Alien already poked uh, T-Mac and got a kill afterwards. They have all the advantage in the world. Even Gary is a level under the opposing Barretts, the jungler of Incendio Supremacy. So everything should be theirs that moment. Fortunately for Team Hack, they got the turtle, but they lost the post turtle fight. Yeah, I mean, already off to a great start here for Incendio Supremacy. Again, playing around with this lead that they have. And really, I mean, a lot of it too, Sunshine just being able to farm up uh, as well as he can. Now, he had the Corrosion Scythe. He's going to be working on the next item. Yeah. You got to protect Sunshine, allow him to scale up. Because right now, a lot of that early damage with Rosa having an early kill here, running that last worship, you know it's going to hurt, right? And TNZ, like we mentioned in the draft, Having this Barrett's pick and just kind of being able to secure an objective with a Daytona's yeah. welcome, being immune to CC, is really going to benefit you here because with this early lead, you've got to continue to compound interest it, yeah. build upon it, and transition to mid-game. And the thing is, Incendio, they have the lead whilst also having two very late-game heroes that needs to scale, yeah. right? Remember, Rosa and Sunshine, yeah. they're waiting for items, man. Yeah, they're going to be waiting for their major core items. We, uh, I don't know if Rosa is interested in going for the Lightning Truncheon, but since they are using, utilizing this uh, Dunox in, a, in an Ube setting, you want more of those AoE damage. And of course, Sunshine will be waiting for the Wind of Nature before they fight, so that Panda as well as Lola will be nullified by Incendio Supremacy. Man, I just feel like there's also just a lot of magic damage from Team Hawk. 
You can already see action more for this turtle. Shadow Stampede bringing TMZ back. Alien in the midst right now. That's going to be the healing oh, coming oh, from oh, Blessing oh, of the Moon oh. Goddess. As TMZ finds it, oh, that's oh, the oh, fire's goodness. It's combo together. Min finally pops a time journey, but it might be a bit too late. He's 1 HP. Panda's very, very low. Alien's looking for the dive. Flickers out. Gary now caught. That's a Phantom Splash. Gary going to be <laughs> falling down to the hands of Rosa. Meanwhile, Sunshine, that was a 4v5, and Incendio won. I mean, 4v5, and you just saw, that's how much the sustain yep. from the SS, SS pick works so well, because you saw everybody was quite low, but yep. no follow-up, no kill was converted for Team Hawk. Rosa, the Ruby did he play? The Ludox bomb just soaks out the members of Team Hawk, and eventually, Incendio Supremacy are going to be able to take over the map. The aggression is going to be there. It's time for the ultimate bonding experience. Oh. Hell, the Turkish delight. You can now taste it. It's how big served to Team Hawk. 3.7k gold lead. And we have to talk about the Joy pick now yeah. because we mentioned it in the draft. Our team's picking Joy just because Joy is a good pick because yeah. it seems like right now the Joy isn't really working out for yeah. Team Hawk. The Radiant Armor pickup coming out from the Barrett, which is a TNZ. More of a sacrificial ro role now going for it. Just tank ability. Allow them to oh. nullify the effect of the Joy. Huh. Well, I mean, at least they get a turret here on the top side, right? But Lola having a bad day. Lola, Lola is just not. Yeah, having a good day. 0-2-0 zero zero here in this game. Incendio keep on punishing him, but God. he's under the turret. There's, it's not like he has any counterplay to oh. that right now. Well, Beauty. Rosa. But yeah. deadly, man. I do agree with this. Number two in hero damage, as you see, very aggressive plays coming out from Rosa, committing the Lunox bomb against oh, no. the... Uh, under the turret, and he will not stop. Oh, Sunshine. It's a solo kill, oh, practically. He goes in for the BMI, but will actually just fall to Sunshine. Sunshine still! Gonna be able to pick up the double under the turret while Rosa is tanking and Apex is dealing out the heals. Oh, it's very aggressive. Combin combining the two ultimates of the Lunox and of course the fact oh that Apex 47 can just heal him up. Whoa! They're so aggressive right Sunshine! now because they don't get the Phantom Step to clear it out. And this is total dominance from Incendio Supremacy. He's an assassin, he's not a marksman. It's always sunny in the land of dawn oh. when Sunshine's playing, man, because what a game he's having. On this carry already, it's it's not even at the eight minute mark here. Next turtle comes up in what almost a six k gold lead, massive here for Sunshine. And I mean, it's Incendio Supremacy coming out just swinging basically at this point. They know their timings. They know that what they needed to wait for, and now they have total dominance. They will not be defending bottom lane, unfortunately, as Alien is far too late for that. Oh, I say that though, Joy is not a great. Pushing hero, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. Definitely not right. I mean, in terms of damage and team fights too, he hasn't really been what? able to dish out that much. Panda clearing out the mid lane, getting some pressure back onto the team, but Incendio with their Benedetta that's ahead two levels, they're going to control the side lanes 100%. Uh oh, Alien with Eye for an Eye getting out. Gary jumping in. That's the final blow. Back to worst team hop. Oh. Stampede brings him back, but it's all for Lord Alien. Oh my god. Almost Ooh. finds a trade. I mean, that's just how far ahead Incendio Supremacy is. But meanwhile, Alien going, what, one versus four? Yeah. Lord just taken by Incendio yeah. Supremacy. And now their eyes are up here on the top side of the map. Uh, the maneuver coming out from Incendio Supremacy. Classic to the strategy that they wanted to uh, utilize. The x lane will play the, uh, op the opposite lane from the Lord, or the long lane. And then they just take the Lord afterwards. They bought a lot of time. They even took the tier, uh, the tier two turret up top. And now they're controlling mid. So with the Lord, I think that they will be able to clear out all of the outer turrets yeah. of Team Hack. I think you just, yep, you've just planted Gary there. He's going to deal with the Lord the best he can. But yeah. Team Hack going to have to sacrifice probably some more turrets here, trying to buy as much time as possible with that Guardian's Barrier. But ultimately going to lose more space across the map. So the question is, even at this point, as the game transitions even further, what does Team Hawk need to do here to stay in this Ooh. game to get back from this massive lead from Incendio Supremacy? Oh. Well, I guess it's the Gary Macro that will be the answer. On a joy, though. On a, On a joy. joy. Unfortunately, I mean, surely you have a lot of dashes, right? That you can escape. But now look at the pincer maneuver coming out. Oh. Alien's just buying time. He is buying time. Now, oh, you can no. see Gary, the great escape, trying to run away. Apex 47 is waiting. There's Gary. 
is going to be able to dash away towards TNZ. Oh. That's so oh. many dashes. Okay. Hey, Gary gets out. It's clean, and <laughs> oh it was my. easy. <laughs> Giving the thumbs up as well as he escapes that again. Oh. Maybe that's why, you know, maybe that's why Joyce picked, because you get to do that, right? But still, yeah. does it actually... Is it actually value as, especially mid late game, team fights? especially late game team fights? Because I can't recall who said this, but it's almost like Joy is kind of like a mosquito, right? You're just kind yeah. of buzzing around, and yeah. it looks really cool, looks really flashy. But are you, is the damage there, especially when you're considering it with how much magic damage is on Team Hawk? I, yes, you have the genius wand there, right? You have the glowing wand already. Yeah. But is this enough, Wolf, for them to start to um, contest these fights? Uh, I think that he's more of a shredder. That, so to answer your question, it will not be enough. But if he transitions to more of a shredder and Panda will be the sweeper, surely that will be enough damage. Combination of magic as well as physical damage in an AoE setting. So that might be what T Mac is waiting for. They're waiting for critical mass onto Panda, who is holding on to just the Wind of Nature and Golden Staff. What? And look at them go. Man, the force to use a time journey. Alien chasing him down. That's oh no. going to be the damage from TNZ in the back. Flanking, getting the position down. Lola defensive, wild charge out. Panda gets out, but when... It, <laughs> oh my god, in the time of just one basic attack from Claude, Sunshine is able to dish out, yeah. like, what, two passive procs? Yeah. And look at this. Lola doesn't have the uh, flicker. And you can see Min is uh, dead for now. Panda will have to just back down. They don't have any team fight wow. integrity heading into the second lord of the game. Incendio will just take it for themselves. What Incendio did is just to force out some of the resources of Team Hack. What? Even and the lord was shredded. My goodness. I didn't even see the lord. <laughs> yeah. He's just gone. I mean, uh, this is a tough situation here, right? Definitely. And you're really wondering, uh, again, was the Diggy the best option with all the, the available heroes here? And still, you know, at some point, it's, it's really tough for Team Hawk. They're going to have to defend in their base here as that Lord is still marching down the mid lane. And, you know, I guess they can buy themselves more time, and that's what Gary's really trying to do, just keep pressure here in the bottom side. But still, when does Panda get to that point where he oh, is no. a threat here? Gary's it's going to be far. really tough for them to defend. Gary's too far. 9,000 gold lead two with the Lord already in on the base turret. Team Hawk trying to defend right now. Is that's going to be the top lane base turret taken down. TNZ. With a death welcome, forcing a time journey early. Man, still trying to buy some time. Goes for the Shadow Stampede to zone the other members away. One base turret down. Gary cutting the waves in the mid lane, denying the push from Incendio Supremacy. Oh, just be able to push out. So what Gary was able to accomplish is to defend the turret without him being in there. It's the mid lane. However, top lane still falls to Incendio Supremacy, inching to a 9.1k gold lead for now. And all of the all of their heroes have all of the core items that they needed. Very tanky Benedetta, very tanky Barretts, and a lot of sustain. Oh, oh my goodness! What? Wow! Wild in the wild charge. He gets melted down by Rosa and Sunshine. Oh. Now they're on the base. The call altar has been placed, but Gary's gonna be able to actually lose all that out. Oh my, my god, that single target damage is unreal. Incendio targeting the base right now. Panda, win of nature. You cannot win of nature, magic, and true damage. Incendio Ooh. strikes back. My goodness. Very different game here that we saw from Incendio's game. Supremacy. Very strong yep. showing, too. I mean, yep. was this the full force of the Turkish Delight Wolf? It seems like it. We did say, we prescribed it after the first game that they should be answering all of those split pushes that Gary was able to do. It's what they did instead is to put a hero to actually manage a thing that's Benedetta and then ban out the two of the heroes that they cannot lock down. All they care about now is to control the macro game and this time they know how to do it. I also love the early rotations coming up from the Barretts to uh, press the issue against the Joy. Remember when we said that the main cover peel for yeah. Incendio is going to be that damage? That damage was insane, dude. Yeah. What the heck? The tanks were flying. Grok was <laughs> in wild charge animation. He died. Yeah. Sunshine, man. Yeah. Right? Sunshine, oh uh, this, is why, uh, this is why. This is, this is justifies that carry is such a high pick exactly. hero because yeah. uh, you saw what it does to tanks right now. Exactly. It just shreds and then paired up with, hey, a Lunox. Yeah. You have the magic damage shred yeah. too, so it's really hard to deal with that, especially when you're talking about such a massive gold difference, right? Yeah. I mean, 
they were just, Team Hawk was constantly trying to scrap back into the game, yeah. but also a big question for me, and I'm sure, you know, even the analysts are going to break this down further, because my big question is, what's going on with the draft, yeah. right? I mean, very yeah, diggy. confusing. A diggy and a Faramis, uh, very tough there to make that work, to make that actually kind of come to fruition throughout the game, especially with, again, that big of a lead, yeah. right? I mean, maybe if things were a little bit even, uh, it would have been better for the Team Hawk, but I got to say, I can't wait to see how this is broken down by the smart guys over there on the landing stand because we need to know. We need to know now. So, boys, take it away. And we're going to let you boys know at the caster's desk. Thank you so much. This is the analyst stand with me getting Q with Assassin Dave and as well as Jace to break down this game because so far it feels like, man, the games feel won by the draft in and of itself. And even so, Incendio has kind of found a way to push Hawk into the way they want to play. Yeah, well, I feel like, you know, when the Joya was picked up by Gary, right? And that's because I think Incendio Supremacy has noticed that, hey, we all we need to do is try to just take away the Ling, take away the Fanny, and then all of a sudden Gary is like, okay, what can I do to buy time for my team? Yet still has some dashes. Yes, Joy, technically speaking, is like one of the many heroes I could do, but until today, I still have questions about this Joy. What is so special about this hero, constant ban, and if it's picked, he doesn't, she doesn't really perform up to what I expected a Joy would be. See, the thing about Joy is if you put a Joy in a jungle position, going it against the Wu Bei strategy, all of a sudden the damage just feels relatively low to the lowest yeah. you can imagine, right? Like, because of the ultimate from the, the Blessing of Moon Goddess, there's so much heal. Now, Joy's ultimate already doesn't do that much damage. Now, with that heal, it's just gonna be even less when you look at it. Joy is mostly played on the sideline with the Vengeance because that's when you go to the dive to the backline and have the Marksman actually kill himself. Let's take a look at the item right here. I mean, so far, I feel like Joy might have been a little bit of a bait strat coming in from uh, Incendio Supremacy because it feels like they purposefully let it through. It's like, yes, we're gonna get the carry. That's already a very good sign. Give us the joy, and then we'll see how we're going to play around it. Because they even have secondary win conditions in Rosa in case Sunshine gets, get, you know, wild charged by Lola on the Brock. Yeah, and also I was also kind of surprised when I saw Min with the Diggy went for the Avarice Emblem instead. I mean. I thought when the Diggy wants to go for the average envelope, I thought you may be playing like, you know, how um, my, oh, my Venus would play. Like, I'm just gonna dump all the bombs, all the damage into my bombs. I'm gonna try to zone you out that way. But I can see, you know, Gideon, you mentioned this. The main goal of the Diggy is to basically use a time journey to allow this Joy to complete her dashes, enter the ultimate, but I don't really see that happening from Team Hawk. Exactly. Was Diggy here in this composition, it's really awkward, right? Because it just doesn't provide too much. There's not too much CC coming out from the side of Incendium, right? I mean, it's a pure damage, have a really beefy front line with TNZ. And Apex 47 is really providing that even beefier front line. Let's take a look at a kill participation here. Apex 47, absolute predator here on Estes, 100% kill participation. I mean, if you only have one kill, that 100% team <laughs> participation, I mean, it's, it's really hard to see these numbers, right, Gideon? It really is. And I think, you know, Alien did a great job at maintaining Lola's pressure and just putting him on an island. I clear faster, I rotate faster, I maintain these trades so that I have, I'm healthy enough to rotate and actually make a difference because every single time we see, oh, Gary getting the perfect setup to jump into the back line. Wait, where's my team? They got petrified in the alt. Now, Alien is definitely a threat, but the spotlight I want to point out is the Estes and Barats combo. I mean, that yes. is just too much. You saw the lore fight, you saw the turtle fight. This guy, I mean, Tienz is literally playing like a tank mindset, right? Walking mm -hmm. in front, soaking up all of that damage. Just when you think he's about to die, Estes coming in with the rescue and turn a whole fight around with one single skill. That's absolutely insane. And with that being said, let's take a look at an MVP of the match. MVP of this match from Incendio Woo! Supremacy. It's Sunshine with a perfect KDA. Perfect KDA right there. Wind of Nature already built. You also got a Carl Sips. Everything that a growing carry needs, Sunshine has provided. 
it all. Even already going into the tenacity boots as well that, you know, provide that tenacity buff so that she, she, the carry doesn't really get stunned out too long. And also even building some magic resist so that Sunshine can stay longer in this team fight. Now, the thing about having carry and just able to do damage for free, especially when you pick out Diggy, you don't have anything to stop the, the carry from doing the damage, right? I was expecting actually from the team, uh, the, from the team side of Hawk to pick out Lolita or Chow to isolate the, maybe it's this heal, right? Or to isolate the, the carry. But in, instead, we see the carry doing damage for free. And let's take a look off the heat map. Oh my goodness. Look at Oh my that. god. And this is between the five minute mark to the 10 minute mark. After the golden lane was done and settled, he started putting so much pressure towards the EXP lane. And even so, started invading into the enemy jungle. He gets the walk in for free. The entire strategy, again, just inspired by Blacklist International. Half five members, you got the bodyguard, uh, the bodyguard squad. Yes. Walk in, take what you want, get yes. back out. Yeah, this is like the heat map of a jungler. If you tell me this is a heat map of a marksman, I'm like, no, my, my heat map of a marksman, I see one lane and one lane only. But Sunshine was able to be afforded so much space, and that's because of that Turkish Delight strat. And that's the essence of this Wubei strategy, right? Once the marksman get the tower up the goal lane, 